Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Good to have you here today, and Merry Christmas to you and your families. Uh, just a couple announcements before we begin. Uh, just want to, uh, for anybody who's a guest here today, welcome to our parish. And I uh, just want to give the safety protocols uh, from our diocese and from our bishop. Uh, of course, where we wear the mask over our nose and mouth. Uh, for communion, we will socially distance coming down, just stay about six foot behind the person in front of you. We do not use the kneelers right now during COVID. We don't have uh, the capacity to clean them. So for the kneeling parts of Mass, you may either sit, stand, or if you want to kneel, you may kneel right on the floor. Um, and at the conclusion of Mass, people will come in to clean the church. Uh, so uh, we ask you to vacate the church, um, you know, in a timely manner. Um, for the offertory, the envelopes did not come out this year. Uh, we had a problem with mailing, plus a problem with production. It, it's a long story, but anyway, we do have envelopes. Uh, Kathy and I put them together on Wednesday, I think, of this week. So if you need an envelope for your collection, uh, they are out in the atrium. You can see one of our ushers or one of our greeters, and they can be placed in the basket or dropped off at the parish any time. If you give online, you don't have to worry about that. And the last thing is, uh, we ask you to save your music sheet, your bulletin. Uh, save that because uh, all the music uh, and refrains are, are in here for Sunday's worship as well. So feel free to bring this back with you over the weekend. So again, Merry Christmas, uh, and we're glad to have you here today. Thank you. Good morning and Merry Christmas. Welcome to St. John the Baptist Catholic Church. Please take a moment to silence all cell phones and other electronic devices. Today, we celebrate the Nativity of the Lord. The intention for this Mass is for Jenny Miller, and our priest will be Father Yo. The entrance is, hymn is, O Come All Ye Faithful, and can be found at number five in your worship aid.
the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries here in the birth of the Nativity of the Lord. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that as we are bathed in the new radiance of your incarnate word, the light of faith, which illumines our minds, that it may also shine through our deeds, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings glad tidings, announcing peace, bearing good news, announcing salvation, and saying to Zion, your God is king. Hark, your sentinels raise a cry. Together they shout for joy, for they see directly before their eyes the Lord restoring Zion. Break out together in song, O ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord comforts his people. He redeems Israel. He redeems Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm in the sight of all the nations. All the ends of the earth will behold the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, in times past, God spoke in partial and various ways to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, he has spoken to us through the Son, whom he made heir of all things, and through whom he created the universe, who is the refulgence of his glory 
the very imprint of his being, and who sustains all things through his mighty word. When he had accomplished purification from sins, he took his seat at the right hand of the majesty on high, as far superior to the angels, as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, this day I have begotten you? Or again, I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. And again, when he leads the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through him, and without him nothing came to be. What came to be through him was life, and this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony, to to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him, but the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by a man's decision, but of God. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we saw his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, The one who is coming after me ranks ahead of me, but he existed before me. From his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace, because while the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only Son, God, who is at the Father's side, has revealed him. The Gospel of the Lord. This week, as we prepared for these Christmas Masses, I was so happy and excited 
uh, because I kept thinking back to March and April when we were shut down. Uh, Holy Week and Easter, uh, we were not allowed to gather as a group, uh, as a people of God, and so I was like, I was so happy that we were able to celebrate all these Masses, uh, which is really great. So I have to begin by thanking all of you, our good parishioners of St. John's, because once we opened up in the yellow phase, you know, we, uh, you, 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 have, you had patience, you had adaptability, you had flexibility, uh, you went with the flow. Uh, we were changing things because depending on what uh, new restrictions were mandated and all that. So I just want to thank you for uh, your goodness, your faithfulness, and for being the good people that you are here at our parish, you know, and putting up with all this that we had to put up with uh, during this time. I also want to thank uh, um, Tricia Wilding and our faculty and our staff at school because they had to do the very same thing. Uh, they had to adapt over and over again with all the changes uh, in all the protocols that were changing all the time. And I have to thank my office staff as well. Uh, really uh, flexible, adaptable, and really did a fantastic job all this time. I also want to thank Marguerite and Randy Menzel uh, and all those. They volunteered to kind of organize the, the, the cleaners here. Um, we could not do that without all of you who do that and volunteer. Uh, they come in and clean the pews and sanitize after every Mass, daily Mass, weekend Masses. Uh, so I just want to thank uh, all of you uh, who volunteer for that. I want to thank Mike Hare and all of our ushers who, again, are faithful in organizing everything during these times uh, and getting people seated and helping people out. And along with them, uh, Judy Newberger, who also heads up all of our uh, greeters. And I want to thank all of our greeters who greet you every week um, and help you as well uh, here at Mass. I want to thank Tom Lauer, Nancy McDaniel, Pat Sipko, uh, who prepare a lot of things, and all of our sacristans who each week faithfully prepare everything for the masses. I want to thank Nell Bailey and all of our cantors, our choir members and musicians. Uh, of course, we couldn't have any choirs during this time, and we still don't, uh, but they volunteered as individuals to help out uh, in singing and to bring us you know, beautiful music. I want to thank Bob Menefee and Randy Menzel uh, for uh, being able to stream our masses and such a great benefit to our people. I receive so many thank yous from our people who are able to join us as you are right now at this mass uh, by the miracle of the computer. And I want to thank Tim Yasher who takes care of our sound system but also uh, put out the uh, screens and our video screens, television screens out in the atrium uh, for all those people to be able to participate uh, sitting out there uh, to join us in mass uh, for these Christmas masses. And I want to thank um, uh, Diane Skirpan, who takes care of our bulletin and our website. And again, she was so flexible and adaptable, changing things on the fly immediately as we got word to get that out to you. Um, and so I want to thank her for all that hard work and for upgrading and rebuilding our website. And then I want to thank Father Josh. Uh, for all his help. Uh, he filled right in for Father Ben, and I want to give Father Ben a shout out as well uh, for his help this past year with COVID. Uh, these two priests, uh, no technology. They helped me get on Zoom and do whatever I needed to do. So I just want to thank them for all their help as well. And again, concluding, just want to thank you again for your great faith and for uh, your patience and adaptability. And it's great to be with you. As I prepared for this homily, <clears throat> I looked at this past year and I said, you know, a great theme would be uh, light and darkness. Uh, because I think with the pandemic and everything, we've seen a lot of uh, obstacles and negative things that have happened. And so um, we have experienced really and truly uh, light and darkness in our own lives. And, you know, the Christmas story is put in the context of light and darkness. So I'd like to begin with uh, a gospel, the ending of the gospel from yesterday morning, from Christmas Eve morning, because all these readings from Christmas Eve morning through today, they're all different gospels, but they, I'm going to pull them all together here, but they all tie together with the great mystery of what we celebrate. So the ending of the gospel yesterday from the, from the uh, canticle of Zechariah uh, said this, and he, this is what his words are. The dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death. And he will guide our feet into the way of peace. That's the end of his canticle. What's this canticle about? This is when he takes his son, our patron, John the baptizer, uh, to the temple for his circumcision on the eighth day after his birth. And at this time, his tongue is loosened. He's able to speak. 
Uh, he comes back to faith. Remember when he was in the temple and he was um, performing the service and the incensation, the angel came to him and said, Elizabeth's going to conceive. He didn't understand, did not believe. He was rendered mute. But now through his time of silence, time of reflection, his joy at the birth of his son John, now uh, once again recovering to full faith, his tongue is loosened and he belts out this beautiful canticle. It begins by giving praise to God. God who will give us the horn of salvation. A weird phrase. The horn for the Jewish people was a, a sign of strength, a sign of power, it's a sign of God. The horn of salvation is the Savior. We are grateful because you have brought to us a Savior because he already knows uh, Jesus is along the way and going to be born in another three months. And so he gives praise to God for that. And he also gives praise to God for the salvation that we have. He says that even though we have failed, you always showed mercy to us and you never ever reneged on the covenant that you set for us. And so he gives praise to God for his great love and great mercy. Then we'll go into the last part, speaking about John, his son. You, my child, my child, John, you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. And so he points out that his son is going to now lead the way and bring people to Christ. And then he ends with this, that the darkness is broken. The dawn from on high now breaks upon us. We no longer will live in the shadow of death and darkness. The darkness of sin from Adam and Eve is now dispelled by the power of God. And we heard in our gospel today that um, John is not the light. He came to testify to the light. When the people came and asked him, who are you? Are you the prophet? Are you the Messiah? Um, are you the one who is to come? Are you Elijah? No, no, no. I am a voice crying out in the wilderness. I am here to testify to the light that has come. And he always pointed the way uh, to Jesus. The whole Christmas story is presented to us in terms of darkness and light. In the gospel last night, Jesus is born at night. It is at night that ha it happens. And so uh, there's light emanating from that manger in the dark night. And immediately after that, the sky is illuminated with the angels who are singing. And it says that the glory of God surrounds them in the entire being of the sky. And the angels, uh, as they're singing, the, the, and appear to the shepherds, the shepherds are first afraid. And the, and the angels say, don't be afraid. Don't, don't be afraid. Uh, the light you, that you see is the light that is coming from the gift of God to us. Um, also, too, Jesus is born not only at night and in the dark. Uh, he's also born in the darkness of the jurisdiction of Herod, who was filled with envy and jealousy and murderous thoughts. Um, he was so envious that he heard another king was being born that he went out to murder the Christ. And so Jesus is born into this darkness. So as he comes into this world, um, there is the complete darkness of sin. But now that spark of light that will only continue to grow. We do know that Jesus was born in the month of December. In Hebrew, it is called Chislev. It's equivalent to our December. We do not know the exact date, um, but we do know it was in December. Um, the, it's, we heard last night that the shepherds were out at night watching uh, the flocks. We say, why would the shepherds pasture their flocks at night? Well, they're not. Um, they only could pasture them during the day. But in, in Chislev began the lambing month, which, in which the ewes would go out, they would find a secluded place, and they would give birth. And so they would keep watch all night so that coyotes and wolves and other predators would not attack their sheep. So again, during the night, uh, as the Lamb of God is born unto us, the natural lambs are being born uh, out in the field. And also too, at the very same time later on in Holy Week, um, as the lambs are being slaughtered in the temple precinct, at the very same time, the Lamb of God will be slaughtered on the cross. And so Jesus truly becomes our Lamb of God. We do not know the exact day of Jesus' birth. We said it on the 25th. That comes from the ancient church uh, under the old Roman calendar because under the old Roman calendar, the, uh, the winter solstice fell on that day, December 25th. So the church chose that day 
Reason why? It is the longest day of darkness, and it's in order to give us hope. Uh, we just celebrated in our calendar today, the winter solstice falls on December 21st or 22nd, depending on each year. Um, and on that day, we had, what, nine hours and 18 minutes of light. The rest was darkness. The church chose the 25th, the winter solstice, because as the natural world is in darkness, we, are see, we can relate that to the spiritual world, that in the darkest days, we can actually have hope because our light comes into the world. And from that day on, um, and every day now, it will keep getting lighter until the summer solstice. As we look to the gospel accounts of the birth in Matthew and Luke, and as we heard John today in the uh, dialogue at the very beginning of the prologue, we have the, the, the power to look very deeply into the mystery of God's love for us. And he could have saved us in any infinite number of ways. When I was in the seminary, in one of our classes, one of our professors had a crazy project for us. He said, I want you to use your imagination and think of a whole bunch of different ways that God could have saved us. And we're like, what? Like, he said, yeah, use your imagination, anything. Just think of something. You know, so, okay, well, he could have just said it by his word. Yeah, that's true. Okay, well, he could have done it this way or that way or, you know. And so we, we thought of all these different crazy ways that God could have saved us. And at the end, the professor, as we were recounting these, he said, he said, yes, God is God, his power is infinite, and he could have saved us in any way he wanted. But why did he save us this way? And the reason why is because the way God wanted to show us in the most deep way of how that love can be conveyed is for him to take on our human nature so that we could become brothers and sisters to Christ. And when I was a kid, uh, to think about Christ as a brother, that we're brothers and sisters to him, that was, that was no, Jesus is God. I mean, was, he was divine. I mean, that's all you think about. Um, but in taking on human nature, okay, and through our baptism, we're all children of God. We're all made brothers and sisters to Christ. What a powerful image that is. And that's how, that, you know, when you think about it, that's how close Christ wants to be to us, that we become brothers and sisters to him. What a beautiful concept. He still remains son of God, but yet he doesn't want us to fear him. He wants us to be close to him. And so as he, the son of God, is lifted up in the glory of the resurrection, so too, and that's why the promise of baptism comes to all of us, so too all of us, the children of God, the brothers and sisters of Christ, will also receive the gift of what the children have received from Christ. And so Jesus is the answer to the question for our sorrows and our sufferings and to the darkness. And when we think about hope, we say, what hope do we have? When we look at the darkness of the world, we can look at any obstacle, we can look at the tragedies we've experienced, the sufferings we've experienced. Uh, we can look at even our own sinfulness and say, how am I ever gonna overcome my own sinfulness? How do we ever have hope? And we have hope by the power of God. We have hope by the light that wants us to be so close to him that we should never be afraid. That's why the angels that night said, do not be afraid, do not be afraid. Go and see the infant child because he will bring you that light. So the joy of Christmas brings us here to celebrate this mass today. Christ himself brings us this great hope. His birth brings light to our hearts. His light brings the warmth of grace to our souls and to the spirit of our human nature. Too long we have dwelt in the darkness and the shadow of death, but no longer do we have to remain there. His light dawns upon us and, his le and he leads us into life and to peace. And as we heard in our gospel today from the prologue of John, what came to be through him was life and his life was the light of the human race. And that is what we celebrate today. And so we no longer have to remain in the darkness because the darkness can never now overcome the light. And as long as we have our hope and faith in Christ, and as long as we remain a brother and sister to him, no darkness in our life, no darkness in the life of the world can ever overcome us. That is the joy, that is the hope, that is the light that we celebrate today. 
And so in a spiritual way, the light of the angels shines upon us today. The light of that star over Bethlehem shines over us today. But more importantly, in a very real way, the light of Christ comes into us. First of all, animated by our baptismal grace, but also then built upon by the gift of the Holy Eucharist. And so as we receive the Lord today, let us open our hearts and let the light be our life. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat>
When our need for a Savior was great, you sent your Son to be born of the Virgin Mary. To our lives he brings joy and peace, justice, mercy, and love. Lord, bless all of us who look upon this manger. May it remind us of the humble birth of Jesus and raise up our thoughts to him who is Emmanuel, God with us and Savior of all, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the offertory. <clears throat> Our offertory hymn is Angels from the Realms of Glory, found at number one in your worship aid. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our offerings be worthy, O Lord, of the mysteries of the nativity of this day, that just as Christ was born a man and also shone forth as God, so these earthly gifts may confer on us what is divine. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through him, the holy exchange that restores our life has shone forth today in splendor. When our frailty is assumed by your word, not only does human mortality receive unending honor, but by this wondrous union, we too are made eternal. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Blessed is he. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Baptist, our patron, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, as we honor with joyful devotion the nativity of your Son, that we may come to know with fullness of faith the hidden depths of, his, of this mystery and to love them ever more and more. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, just two quick announcements. Parish calendars are available at the exits. Also, the uh, home blessing uh, epiphany cards are available at the exits. You may take those and uh, your bulletins, take those home and bring those back on Sunday. You can keep those, bring those back. The music for Sunday uh, Mass is in there as well, and that includes uh, Saturday night, tomorrow night. Uh, this morning, when I get up early, I ran to the Christmas tree. I was all excited to see what I got, maybe a new fishing rod from Santa Claus or maybe a new reel. <laughs> there was nothing under the tree, nothing. And there was a note on the tree that put, Santa put there, opened up, Dear Father Bob, when we were processing your order, Jingles the Elf was tested positive for COVID. We had to shut down for 14 days. <laughs> Better luck next year. So guess what? Next year, I'm going to stick bubble gum all over that roof. So <laughs> just kidding. I love Sandy. He's my buddy. He was good to me. I uh, want to wish you and your families a very joyful Christmas day and Christmas season. Thank you for being here. And again, as I mentioned at the beginning and in the homily, thank you for everything during this time. Uh, I'm so glad we're able to have masses here for Christmas. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Bow down for the blessing. <clears throat> May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy day. May he drive far from you the darkness of vice and illuminate your hearts with the light of virtue. 
Amen. Amen. May God, who willed that with the great joy of his son's saving birth, be announced to shepherds by the angel. May he fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor and make you sharers with the church in heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Oh.